What's up guys, it's Kaze here. So John Cena's been hitting at retirement a lot. And throughout the highs and lows of John Cena's career, there's one rivalry that lives in my head rent free. And that's his rivalry with Kevin Federline. Now, you might be wondering, who's Kevin Federline? And if you do know who Kevin Federline is, isn't this a sad little club we're in? Now, Kevin Federline started off as a background dancer for various popular artists. His real claim to fame was being married to Britney Spears. Yep, that's literally it just being married to Britney Spears. Also, this entire time was during Britney Spears' peak meltdown, so a lot of people were blaming K-Fed for being the downfall of her career and also being a leech. So it really didn't help that he had no real credentials to be around the people he was around. Oh yeah, he also tried to be a rapper too. Now, you may also be wondering, what's his significance to WWE and John Cena? There is none. However, K-Fed was a natural heel in real life, so his personality was kind of primed for WWE television. Now in 2006, John Cena was still cheered by some male adults, and he wasn't completely a product for the children at this point. Now this is the year that the Marine came out, so this is the era where John Cena was in the green cargo shorts and the camo hat. If it wasn't so heavily tied to the movie, this would have been one of my favorite looks by John Cena, but the whole look kind of felt promotionalized, and the Marine is all I can think about when I see him in this outfit now. I'll give it three swag points though. Not lame. So this all starts when Johnny Nitro, yes, Johnny Nitro, promises to bring out an A-list celebrity later that night, and we should have known right away this was Cap. Who was gonna come out for Johnny Nitro? Snooky? I would have preferred Snooky. Anyway, the time comes for this A-list celebrity to be revealed, and it's K-Fed. And at the time, I was way too young to understand what a clout chaser was, but looking back at it, Kevin Federline was like a pioneer when it came to clout chasing. So he comes out to very minimum reaction. Jim Ross is trying his hardest to make Kevin Federline seem interesting, and if the great Jim Ross can't make you seem interesting, you're the problem. By the way, speaking of Jim Ross, this story ties into him in a pretty sad way, so stick around and like and subscribe. So K-Fed enters the ring, and he's sagging his pants pretty hard enough for him to have to grab his crotch throughout his entire promo. K-Fed shows us some masterful heel work by teasing that he's gonna preview his latest song from his upcoming album, Playing With Fire. Luckily for all involved, he decided not to. John Cena then comes out, and the segment ends with him giving K-Fed the FU. For those of you too young or don't remember, that's the attitude adjustment. You remember the FU though? What a great time. So like I said, the segment ends here, and if the entire rivalry just ended here, we could all walked away with some dignity. However, next week, K-Fed decides to return, and King Booker actually comes out in support of K-Fed. He called it a treasure, but he said it like King Booker. I, King Booker. And Cena comes out again, and he questions Booker T's black card. Now maybe I'm the wrong one to break this news. And you're right, so out comes Ron Simmons, and you know how Ron Simmons is always saying damn a lot? Damn. 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 Well, this is where it starts. Yeah, this was actually the first one he did before it became one of the funniest reoccurring jokes in WWE history. Later that night, K-Fed slaps John Cena during his match against Johnny Nitro. And we kind of just don't see or hear from K-Fed for a few weeks. Magic Mirror, how can I look like a douchebag today? Kevin, um, I would say first of all, don't shave or shower. I would say just go ahead and wear that tank top all day. Don't forget to walk around with an undeserved sense of accomplishment. Turns out during that time, he dropped his album and he was dealing with the rollout of that. The next time we see K-Fed is during the main event of Cyber Sunday. This is when they were doing the whole champion of champions thing. Becomes the champion of champions. So it was John Cena versus The Big Show versus Booker T. All world champions of their respective brands, all battling to see who was the best world champion of WWE. It was during this match where K-Fed returned and caused John Cena to lose this match. And I will say this was a distraction finish. It wasn't K-Fed looking overly dominant towards John Cena or anything like that. That would be insane. The next night on Raw, K-Fed challenges John Cena to a one-on-one -on -one match for the first Monday Night Raw of 2007. And this was actually a pretty tough week for K-Fed. That same week, his album only sold 6,000 copies. And this isn't bad for your first album, but when your record label and people who back you are expecting 500,000, you are the problem. I tried listening to his album, but then I realized I do love myself, so I decided against it. 
Also in that same week, Britney Spears filed for divorce. So on the January 1st edition of Monday Night Raw, 2007, Hayfed comes out in a boxing robe and a boxing headset. Kfed tries to put Cena in a headlock, but it doesn't really work. Next, they randomly start a master lock challenge. Man, you remember the master lock challenge? That's one of those things I wish a younger talent would have. Just something that's proven difficult to beat. They kind of do it with Baron Corbin where nobody kicks out of the end of days, or at least it's rare when they do it. Stuff like that just adds to the character and it makes whoever inevitably beats them come out looking a lot stronger. So after the master lock challenge doesn't work, Johnny Nitro then interferes in the match and that's when K-Fed kicks John Cena in his C Nation. Cena recovers and he's done with the games so he's going for an FU. That's when Umaga steps in and they were in the middle of their actually underrated feud. Cena gets hit with the title and that's when K-Fed covers him for the three count. Later that night John Cena got his payback and gave K-Fed an FU and this in my opinion was the worst feud John Cena has ever been in. It did nothing for either man's career. K-Fed was literally beefing with John Cena and still only sold 6,000 copies. In fact, John Cena's entrance song that he rapped himself has sold over 1.3 million copies. Now, a lot of fans were actually upset about this entire rivalry. Some say it's worse than when David Arquette won the WCW championship just because he didn't actually pin a wrestler, he pinned Eric Bischoff. And when you think about it, throughout Cena's entire 13 month reign, only three people beat him. Shawn Michaels in that one hour long Raw match, Carlito in some forgettable TV match, and Kevin Federline. Now I said Jim Ross is wrapped into the story in a sad way. So the night K-Fed and John Cena faced each other, Jim Ross actually won it that night off. Jim Ross is a huge Oklahoma Sooner fan, and they happened to be playing in the Fiesta Bowl that same night. Now the Fiesta Bowl was counter-programming to Monday Night Raw. However, Jim never asked for a day off in 26 years of working for the WWE at that point. Vince still denied the day off, and Jim had to call this awful match. And to add insult to injury, the Sooners had an upset loss in overtime over a two-point conversion. Poor Jim. John Cena went on to have a Hall of Fame career and has even started acting. And Kevin Federline went on to be famous for once being famous, and then not famous at all. But yeah guys, that's pretty much it. I find it fascinating that this even happened, and even more fascinating that nobody really talks about it. If you enjoyed, leave a like, and for more, subscribe. Got another pretty interesting video I think you guys might like, so be on the lookout for it. Other than that, put your seatbelt on, and until next time, keep it kaze.